welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I am Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing the philosophy of information. What are we drinking, guys? <laughs> <laughs> This is brilliant. We are I drinking really Naked Nun from the Adelbert's Brewery in Austin, Texas. This is a Vit beer, and what is the ABV on this? I think it's 5.8. 5. 5. 5. 5.8, yep. 5.8. I have heard you guys talk about this one, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, we tried it on site at Adelbert's one day. And we were a little drunk, so I don't know if our uh, judgment was completely rational. No, not you two. Yeah. But never. But... Uh, Damn, that shit looks like lemon soda. Yeah, yeah, it does. Let's see how it, we'll see how it tastes here in a minute. Uh, I want to say before we get started, uh, this show is going to deal with some deep topics, some of which which we don't have time to go into in this show. So if you, after you listen to this, want more information on this show, we will have show notes, uh, links to other resources you can go to. You can get all that by going to our website, sixpackphilosophy.com, and subscribing to our newsletter. We now have a newsletter. We do, we do. You'll get a little pop-up on your screen asking you to subscribe, <laughs> fill that out, um, and confirm in your email, and you will get the Six Pack Philosophy newsletter. And the good part is you also, uh, you know, we're going to get lots of cool stuff uh, at, at, as we find things, yeah. you know? Lots yeah. of cool stuff, like like our quizzes and so forth. So. Yeah, we're, we're also on the newsletter doing a... Um, to, uh, uh, philosophy in the news? Yeah, philosophy in the news. I was yeah. going to say today in philosophy, but I knew that wasn't no. quite right. Although that could be fun, too. That could be fun. Damn. Anyway, we'll, we'll look at it. It's, it's a new thing, so it's evolving. So get on there. May you get a picture of my butt. No, you're not going to get a picture of my butt in the news. Not as long as Anna's right. <laughs> so. Only because I don't want one. So thanks. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So we're doing the philosophy of information. John, I, I, I've been looking over the, the notes that you've got up here, the, the, the vast research you did, and and I am both excited and boggled by this. So, well, it, it, it was tough. This is one of those those topics that goes way deeper than one show can possibly encompass. But we're going to try and hit the major points, and and you'll be a little more informed after this. And uh, there's plenty of independent research you can do after that if you want to get even deeper. Before we go into the show, I do want to give a thank you to one of our Patreons. Thad actually sent us the inspiration for the show. He asked the question, we live in a physical world, but does that mean everything we know or can name is also physical? Uh, he goes on and he, he specifically talks a lot about information, which is yeah. where this comes from. But I think it was a great show topic. So thank you, it Thad. a great topic. Great question. Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, we appreciate it. Hey, if y'all, anybody else out there has some questions you want us to look at, go ahead and send them to us. If they don't suck, we'll do them. Yeah. So, all right. If they do suck, they we may still suck. do them. Who knows? Yeah, we've done plenty of sucking shows, don't we? <laughs> In fact, we came up with several ideas as we were waiting on the show to start. We did, we did. Yeah. Uh, they were really bad. They were yeah. really bad. So, uh, going into the show, I think the first thing uh, that we need to answer is, if the world is physical, the universe is physical, maybe a better description of that, then is everything physical? Yeah, does, does, does something have to be physical to exist? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, to start that off, I want to start, there's going to be a lot of definitions in this show, but I want to start uh, with the definition of physical, because I think it's a word we all use, but maybe don't think about as we're using them. Uh, before I read this definition, uh, Mike, what does physical mean to you when somebody just says physical? I would say that that uh, if you were to ask me me that, I would say it was something tangible, something I could touch. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I, I think that's about the best definition I could come up with. Yeah. Anna, did, does that about sum up what you think? Um, yeah, something that is experienceable. Because I think of things that, that maybe... Well, I guess I was thinking like electricity can't exactly touch it, but you can. Oh, you, you yeah, can, you know when you touch yeah. electricity. Well, well, yeah. Well, and are you touch? Well, it's electricity is running through you, so I guess you are touching it. So yeah. Well, I think both also of the a song by Olivia Newton-John. Yes, absolutely. Let's not leave that out. Let's get physical, oh, God, physical. No. God, I, I should have been a singer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's all no. it's all covered under fair use, so you, you feel right. free to, to, to go yeah, ahead as much as you yeah, want. Go to. ahead. 
Um, uh, the the definition as written here actually touched on a lot of those points and, and actually touched on philosophy a lot. Uh, I'm going to read the two two definitions here. One, relating to the body as opposed to the mind, and that, and that gets into the mind-body yeah, problem. Yeah. And two, and I think this one really touched on what you guys were getting at, relating to things perceived through the senses as opposed to the mind, tangible or concrete. So things that your senses can perceive. Now, I, I, I think this is a, a really intuitive definition, but I think it's a little it's bit problematic. A yeah, it's got a problem because, uh, you know, I can uh, I can experience loneliness. I can experience love. I can experience sorrow, but that's not physical. No, it's not. And, and I guess the the other problem with it, let's imagine an object, uh, you know, maybe maybe a, 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 that air. Air is a great example. Um, where, well, I guess that, that one applies too, but we can imagine an object that maybe emits a, a kind of light that is outside our visual spectrum, maybe isn't really touchable, doesn't emit a sound. And then we have to ask, well, it wasn't any of our senses. Our senses can pick it up, but we could maybe using an x-ray or something like that, pick it up. Does that then pull it out of the physical realm? Cer certain decibels maybe of sound, uh, that, 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 that you can't physically experienced, but they're yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Or it requires some kind of uh, machine, you know, radiation, I think is, is, yeah. is a yeah. great example. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't, you don't physically experience it at least at first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Later you get really sick. You get but, really, really sick if you live at Chernobyl. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so, so uh, uh, I think that's, th there's some problems, but I think it's intuitive. I think it's something people can generally understand and applies broadly to to many things we deal with um next thing that I, that i had is can things in the mind really be non-physical if the mind is physical so th this touches on okay we we've said that that things of the mind are non-physical and things of the body are physical right but aren't the things in your mind and, and we've shown this through neural stimulation yeah. and everything can't they be induced physically and aren't they created by physical neural pathways? So why do they get this distinction of non-physicality? Yeah, I mean, we can take a look at drug use. Mm -hmm. You can induce a state of euphoria with certain drugs. You can, um, and that is a physical thing going into your physical body Um altering the way that your physical brain is firing off and creating this feeling and given all of that it would seem like it's it's all physical and that those feelings are then manifested physically it, it's still neurons it's yeah. still it's still neurons firing right yeah absolutely yeah. and it becomes even more problematic when we when i ask you the question Let's take the mind out of it. Let's take our experience out of it, our consciousness problem out of it. If we're going to say something can be non-physical, besides the, the consciousness problem, the, the screen we see, I want you right now to imagine a non-physical object. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough. Silence. Uh, silence is a non-physical object. But, but you're experiencing it through your... <laughs> Either your hearing or your lack of hearing. Is, 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 is that not a physical aspect of it? Well, and I would uh, argue that silence, or we could even expand that further and say the void, yeah, is say the absence. absence of a physical object. And, yeah. you know, you, does having nothing in itself make it a non-physical object? I think you know? that's a valid question. So. Yeah, well, you've made it something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting when we use vocabulary to make nothing something. Yeah. The void void means nothing, but by us naming it and creating it and understanding that it's out there, it's it becomes something. I mean, take zero, for example. Yeah, zero is not nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, zero is a representation of a lack. Um, zero in the way that we count is a placeholder. Yeah. Um, I mean... Well, and then there, there's there's three things. There is the symbol of zero, mm -hmm. the concept of zero, and the thing that is zero. And right. then Congress, which was yes. also very zero. Yeah. 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 Oh, and, and, and the uh, well, the, the that would be a negative. That would be a negative. 
the rapper zero yeah that's, candy bar yeah yeah so uh, you know while we're thinking about this uh uh can a a think of a non-physical object i want to kind of bring up an idea and, and creep this into your brain as a possible candidate for a non-physical object okay and i'll do this with a question is information physical so i i, I want to get an answer to that then i want to do a definition of information is information physical and we can discuss further my gut instinct would be that it, information is not physical. Information is a representative rep representation of something physical. But then I start thinking my way through that, and I, 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 don't, I don't know that that's true. What is information? Okay, well, I can answer that question uh, really easily. Are you sure? Yes, I can. Uh, there's two definitions here. I'm going to read them both because the first definition tends to be the more used. But I think the second definition is the one that's actually going to apply to our conversation more. So the first definition is facts provided or learned about something or someone. Uh, but the second one is what is conveyed or represented by a particular arrangement or sequence of things. And that second one is the problem I have with trying to figure out whether or not information is uh, an object or not. Mm -hmm. Because to me, if information is, uh, is linked to those, those particular objects, those are physical things. Yeah. And, and, and then that makes it something that's very hard to, to get a grip, grip on. Is the information physical or is the information just describing something physical? Right. Is it a derivative or, or is it a, um, a, a primary uh, yeah. thing? Um, and, and then we have to ask the question. We said it's the arrangement of things. So let me ask this. You have three things. I don't know. These, these glass of beer. And we all take our glass of beer and we pass one to the left. So they've all shifted one. You would have to argue because the arrangement has changed, the information has changed, but it ha do we have a new thing? Yeah, you've got a new thing. Okay. Well, then yeah, the only yeah. thing that's new would be the information. So yeah, then. Well, I think the same con uh, a, a better example to me would be a recipe. Yeah. You know, you can have, you can put the same things together mm -hmm. with the same information and come up with a different product. Hashtag yeah, Taco Bell. Yeah, <laughs> one could ingest water, ingest sugar, and ingest yeast, yet we wouldn't say that person has drank beer. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Uh, you, you've, you've done something different with that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, touching on that, um, so I want to talk about different types of information, because we said it's an arrangement of things. Um, but, but then, you know, kind of, what does that mean? Uh, I think with information, you could go into infinity with the different things. I think you start to get into minutia, but I want to, I have four here that I want to focus on <laughs> that are more important to the history of humans. Uh, and, and the, these are kind of in the historical order. Um, and then there's going to be a fifth one later that I'm not going to mention here because we're going to do a whole dive on it. Um, so the first one is uh, chemical information. So chemical information has been important to life generally. Uh, DNA is just a really long sequence of chemical information sure. stored, replicated, it's altered. A recipe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but all it is, uh, you are the chemistry person. How many different chemicals are in DNA? There's like six or something, right? Uh, four in <laughs> DNA. Four in DNA. And all, all of, well, of DNA is just a different arrangement mm -hmm. of these four chemicals. Yeah. So we can, we can put together... Um, three, right? Hmm? Three in DNA, right? ADT? Adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Four. Okay, four. Okay. So we can take these and we right. can... We can arrange them in practically an infinite sequence of different ways. And we have arranged them in what is seemingly to a human and their lifespan and their ability to, to ingest information. And what is seemingly an infinite uh, string of, of different things. And you can imagine anything that is alive on Earth and realize that was a different, represent not just species-wise, person, ant, bacteria, was a different representation of information on a chemical level. Any th living thing you can imagine. 
So there is a lot of different ways we can arrange it, and it seems important to us because it's really important to us that we're different from bacteria. So there's a limited number of of, of, of resources, that, but as they're, they're arranged differently, they become different information. Okay. Yes. So you can actually break the information down to other information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, meta information. Which, which makes you wonder if there's if that's really creating something new or you just, you, you know, you, how far down do you have to go to find out what that, that root information is? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. right. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is neural information. Yep. So this is your memories, your thoughts. Um, this came along in, in our evolution later than chemical information. Uh, it has properties that it's much more easily alterable. Uh, it's much more flexible. And I, I would argue, though I don't know that this is definitive, that we can... Uh, that the information stored in DNA is necessarily broad, and we can put much more specific information into neural networks. And more flexible. We, 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 we can say that uh, instead of just saying, when I see something red, run away, we can say, when I see something red, do this long decision tree of is it a bad thing or not. So it, it's, it's much more flexible. Okay, more flexible, but also more abstract, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Much. I, th- I think. I think neural information is, is is quite a bit more abstract because uh, um, it, it's harder to understand. Yeah. I can look at the ingredients of of chemical information and say this is what it's made up of. I can't look at a memory and say this is what it's made up of. I would disagree with that, and, and, and the reason I would is we have had a hell of a time trying to decode the individual connections of our neural networks and decide what does this mean if i take this connection and move it to here how does that change we we are far from decoding that but then the same thing can be said about dna we have a general idea like with the mind that this area deals with this we have a general idea that these genes correlate to this but we don't think about the human genome project you know Mm -hmm. where we've we 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 have mapped out the genome now there's there's issues with it but there's at least a general map of, 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 of of the human genome now right we have listed out the the general human genome and there's a, a semi standard order that everything is in yeah um, with obvious variances for each individual um, but there are massive chunks of it that exist and we don't know what they do in fact there were well, um, I, I, again I I, 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 I I understand that but to me when you're talking about chemical information human genome mm-hmm. we have an understanding that these things go together to make this we I, don't have that understanding i don't think about memory love well, emotion. I, I, I would argue we do, we do but I, I guess something i want to well, clarify I that think would, we're beginning to Something I want to clarify that, that, that I think will shed more light on the DNA part of it is a better term for mapping the, the genome is we have indexed the genome. So you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's, that's right. Yeah, we got a giant tablet with, with an alien book on it, and we took it all and we imported it into a computer, and we said now we can search and find different spots and start to break it down. But there are still vast part of it where we say, I don't know what this symbol means, or I know what this symbol means, but I don't know what it means in the sentence. We haven't yeah. decoded it. Sure, sure. I think that's fair. You know? yeah. And I think we've done something similar with our brain. We, we, we know that when this hormone goes into the brain, this action starts to take place, or this area of the brain, when stimulated, makes this kind of thing. Or, and, and we've done that from a very broad perspective. And we even started working on that before we started working on the genome or knew what a gene was. What we haven't done is said, okay, I know this area deals with forming temporary memories, but can I go in there and make that wagon you remember purple instead of red? We have we are like light years away yeah. from that level of understanding. Okay. So, all right. After neural information, we go to written information. Um, and this one, um, we'll get into what this means a little bit later. This one's actually unique among the four in that it's the only one of these that is not processable. Um, and we'll go a little bit more into what information processing is. Uh, but written information was a way for, was the first way we really learned to augment our neural information um, in a way that wasn't as volatile, that didn't yeah. forget, you know. Yeah, we were able to sort of store 
our neural information. Because y- you think about oral history, mm-hmm. you know, um, the people who had lived through things told stories to the people who were coming up, whose job it was then to relate those those incidences to people coming up after them, mm-hmm. in addition to uh, experiences that they had in their own lifetimes. And we sort of, we developed this where we could say, okay, I don't have to keep this in my brain anymore. Mm-hmm. I can sit it over here and everybody else can still access it. Yeah, yeah. And we, we can pass it on in, in, a, in a very concrete way. I can I can not only pass information to my kids. In a which, more stable way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I can not it. only pass information to my kids, which I could always do verbally, but I can take this, I can put it in the Library of Athena and pass it to my great, 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 great grandchildren mm-hmm. directly. In the same format, theoretically. Obviously, it can be changed, but um, in yeah. mostly the same format as it was whenever you said it. You're not playing a game of telephone anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I don't know that there's a lot more. I think written information is much better understood. I don't yeah, know if yeah, there's any Something we deal there. with all the time. Yeah. The last one I want to get to is computer information. Because this seems to have really taken over written information, and it has a lot of the same properties, but we have taken uh, written information and made it processable and put it into a computer. We've also made it more accessible. Um, again, I think everybody is, is familiar with the Internet. Obviously, you're listening to us. Um, what is this Internet thing? Yeah, well, uh, you're not. Li- I mean, you're listening to us here. It's different. It's okay, different. Okay, anyway, okay. Um, it's a web of things, and you throw it out, and you catch things with it. Oh, we're fishing. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, fishing. yeah, we're like spiders. Um, they catch flies. <laughs> fishing spiders. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but anyway, computer information. We, we've we've kind of evolved. Master written of the inf- allegory. <laughs> 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 We've kind of evolved written information to much more mimic the two types of information that we evolved uh, to make. And we're really starting to see serious human augmentation with this technology. Uh, things as, as complex as implants or, or limbs coming off and we rebuild it to things as simple as I need to know something. I take this little oh, phone yeah. right here and, I, and this is my second memory or second yeah. knowledge. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't bother remembering phone numbers or calendar events, mm-hmm. anything anymore, because I've got a phone yeah. that tells me everything. Yeah. yeah. And to the extent that we are now, uh, it's been done and they're developing more effective way to do it. Um, storing computer information on chemical information. Yeah. On our DNA. Yep. They're, Not they're our like individual DNA. It's been stored on DNA. Yeah. They're storing it on DNA. Uh, yeah. Well, and they're, they're stored. I kind of made it broad with this. I mean, we go into their storing on crystals. They're storing on, oh, I yeah. mean, we could go on and on, but I think all of that kind of broadly falls into. We're storing computer information on DNA. Yes. Yeah. They have. Um, I am so there's old a little, and out of touch. They took a, a chunk of DNA, and I won't go into the specific details, but essentially they took a chunk of DNA and implanted a picture, I believe it was a of a cowboy on a horse. and Which is what I would choose to do. Of course. Um, but, so it, it's on the DNA, and if you look at the image that's rendered, that it, it was originally and that it's rendered to, it's not great. Like, you have to know that it's a cowboy on a horse that you're looking for to um, to recognize it. But it's surprisingly recognizable for what they've done. It's really cool. Anyway, ta- that was a tangent. Sorry. So all of this... I think that's cool. <laughs> it is so cool. We, we've gone through the four types of information, and all this was back to the question. So I want to I wanna pose it again and see if anybody has come to any conclusions here. Is information physical? Um... Um, is information? Yeah, I think it, I, th- I think it has to be. I think I think it has to be. I think information is physical, like numbers are physical. Um, I, I think that the only way for us to perceive and interact with it is to perceive it as physical. But I think that perhaps at the root. Um, outside of our own understanding, because I think this data exists without us, but in order for us to be able to understand it, we have to put it in a physical 
well, space. That gets back to the existential question is, does anything exist if it's not observed? There's that. So, you know, uh, I, I think the very fact that, 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 that uh, you know, that it, that it is observed is what makes it real. So that, so it has to be. So. Yeah. Well, and um, I, I don't know. Of course. We I, haven't done that show in like three years. So yeah, it's yeah. been a long time. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and give mine. I've done a lot more research, and I'm probably skipping ahead here, but uh, I personally believe uh, physical things are information. So I uh, I think that the, the question... Everything is information. Yeah. Yeah. So I, th I think the question's kind of on its head. Um, we're about halfway through. Time to talk about the beer? I think about we should. About halfway through this beer. I think we should talk yeah. about this beer. Who wants to start this one? I can go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, this is not a bad beer, and uh, unfortunately, I can't say a whole lot more than that. Um, there's, there's not a lot, uh, special about it. I can't really, uh, tell you that, um, it, it, it has this one thing that I really love about it. Uh, even, even the can is kind of not bad, you know, when I look <laughs> at it. Yeah. It's, it's not exactly what I think of when I think of a whip beer. And I know that this is technically within the, within the style, uh, but I... The banana, the clove, none of it's there. It doesn't have that... that um, You're thinking of a Hefeweizen and not a wit beer. Oh, yes, I am. You're absolutely right. Um, well, I was confused then. Uh, two points off my credit. Um, but uh, it, it, it's very lemony. Um, it, it's, it's got a soft touch on the palate. Um, it comes in smooth and goes out smooth, but never really hits what I would call a climax in the flavor. Um, it, it, and you gotta love the climax. Yeah, I, I mean, you really. I, I think when you take the first sip, you say, "Ooh, that's good." You want to try that? I don't really ever get that with this beer. I, uh, it's okay. It, it's it's not bad. Um, uh, for that, I'm I'm giving this a two three. Uh, I don't think it it really uh, uh, rises to to any significant level, but I would never turn it down. It's not a bad beer. You or me? Go ahead. All right. Uh, I think. Um, a lot of what you said is it's it, it, it's pretty accurate. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that to me this is a an exceptionally adequate beer, mm -hmm. um, if one can be exceptionally adequate. <laughs> um, it's You're very uh, good at being adequate. Yeah, very good at being adequate. It's it's not a great beer. I'm not gonna go out of my way to get it, uh, but if you offered it to me, I would enjoy it. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, a good summer beer. It's very very light. Uh, God, I'm using the word very. What could y'all have done to me? The uh, the citrus side on it is is it's there, but it's you, you said lemony. To me, it's more of an almost like a peel flavor mm -hmm. than, than, than the actual lemon. Yes. Yeah, I was about to say that as you were describing it. It's like you bit into a lemon Without with a rind it. on the outside. Yeah. You just yeah. bit, so it, it has that lemon flavor, but there's definitely a a rind in there. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I, I think it's, that's 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 a plus for this. Actually, I I kind of like that on it. Mm -hmm. uh, the carbonation's a little heavy for me, but that's just me and, and, and what I like. Um, this is a tough one because I think that they, I think they did what they were trying to do. I think that they, that they effectively made the beer they were trying to make. Uh, I'm going to go two one. Okay, two one. Okay, um, oh, right there. So I like the beer. And kind of like you said, John, like if somebody ever offered me this beer, I'd be like, hell yeah, I'd love a beer. Yeah. This beer is fine. <laughs> I think that's that's the single best. It's fine. <laughs> it's not good. It's not. It's fine. <clears throat> yeah. Exceptionally yeah. adequate. I would say thank you if someone handed me yeah. this yes. beer and mean it. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's good. Adelbert's has numerous other beers that are better. Oh yeah, I yeah, yeah. love Adelbert's. Um it's it's a fine wit beer. Um I I do like the citrus notes on it. I do like the zestiness of it. Um it, it's I think it's well made, absolutely. But it's just not enough to it, I guess. Um, so with that, I'm going to give it a two, four. All right. So we did two, one, two, three, and two, four. Yeah. So I guess now we do our own version of fuck, Mary kill. And we do fuck date lawnmower. Uh, fuck date lawnmower. I like fuck that. Date lawnmower. Yes. So. It, I'll just start off. Yeah. It's lawnmower beer. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, yeah, a good, 100%. it's a really good lawnmower beer. Uh, on a hot day, this is going to refresh you. Yeah. 
I, I would say this beer is a blind date beer. Your casual date. Your I'm not looking for anything serious yet. Just kind of just kind of feeling out. Uh, you're not really looking to put up big numbers to impress. Also, uh, I, I think you're if you find yourself and you don't know the situation uh, with somebody who doesn't like heavy beers, there's a big crowd up there. I don't think this is going to offend them. You know, I think this is going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but th this is definitely kind of an early feel out beer. It's, it's, it's nothing where you're really going for that, that, that 10 score date, you know? Yeah. This is a nil beer. Okay. Like it, I don't think that it's going to count any points in your, in your column to getting laid. And I don't think it's going to count off at all. It's certainly not going to hurt you. Yeah, yeah. If you offer this beer, then whether or not you get laid or not depends on your personality. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. If you've got a good personality, this is a good dating beer. The if good you news. Know, you need something stronger. The good <laughs> news about this beer, though, if you give them this beer and you do get laid, they're thinking about you and not the beer. Absolutely. At least you know that. That's a good point. Yeah. They have, forgot, they have long forgotten this beer. If you want to know if it's you that they like, try this beer. Yeah, absolutely. I will say that this beer is light enough that, that, that I think it would be really easy to drink 12 of these without realizing it. Well, yeah. yeah. I think the people who um, who go and get a 30-pack of Bud Light on the weekend who are maybe wanting to transition into craft beer, where craft beer is going to have a higher ABV typically, um, I think this is a good transition. Because so when they try to drink an ass load of them, they're not going to die of alcohol poisoning. Yeah. <laughs> um, and 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 I think that the flavor is for that crowd is going to be very bold, but I don't think it's going to be off putting. It's it's bold if you're used to Bud Light. Yeah, 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 yeah. So on to the show again. Uh, next, I want to talk about information processing. I kind of hinted about this uh, earlier when we were talking about different types of information. Uh, I want to start with a definition, and then I have some questions that I think we can. Uh, work through a few of them rather quickly. Uh, so information processing. I got this uh, from Wikipedia and probably one of the worst Wikipedia articles I've ever seen. In fact, if you want to see an example of a bad Wikipedia article, go to the information processing one. However, I didn't think their definition to start was too terrible. Uh, so we'll go ahead and use it. Um, information processing is the change of information in any manner detectable by an observer. So the alteration of information. So uh, that really sheds some light on, on the four different types of information and where I said written information was not processable. Once it's encoded, it's pretty much there. It's not really alterable. I guess you could copy and alter it, but it, it doesn't lend itself to easy alteration. Um, so how do we process information? Uh, we do a lot of things uh, that are information processing that we don't really think of as such. For instance, when you have a, um, a bunch of people working at a company and you ask, what's the average income of this company? The average is not a thing in itself. It's a derivative. It is a processing of the information of what everybody makes. I mean, if you wanted the true information, you would say, how much is each person paid? And just look at that. And that would be your information. Um, we can look at it's created information. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We can look at it, anything that has to do with growth rates. So, for instance, um, where your location might be a piece of actual information. Well, I can't say that. Your speed is a piece of actual information. Um, but your acceleration, how fast you're accelerating, that is, is um, well, no, I'm, I'm wrong on that too. Most things that deal with change, acceleration has, has its own thing because you, you can say the amount of force being put on. It's is a mathematical form. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly, exactly. <coughs> <clears throat> but growth rates. Here, here's a great one. That little thing where your mother uh, stood you by a doorway and made a little mark every yep. year or so. Your height at any given age is information itself. But your growth rate, that is derivative information. We process that. Yeah, yeah. We created that. So with that, I think that's, that's well understood. The next obvious question is, why do we process information? Uh, why is processable information important to us? I, I think these are related. So the reason is uh, we're limited. We're limited in our capacity. And if you hand me a list or spreadsheet of the income of everybody at a large company, it, it's going to look like gibberish to me because I don't have the mental capacity to handle that. And there's a lot of information that can be derived, that can be pulled from that, 
that isn't important to us. When people are paid, um, how much each person pays in taxes, how, you know, there's all this other information that we don't care about. We care about one facet of that information. So by processing it, we can actually strip away all the stuff we don't care about. And we can actually look at a few smaller bits of information that our minds can handle. So that's why it is important to us to be able to process this because of our own limited capacity for information. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as, as these, these great information powerhouses. Um, and in the history of evolution, we pr that's probably right. But in the, in the, the grand scope of, of information across the world or, or universe, uh, we're, we're simple, weak little things. I mean, we, we, we have really limited capacity for information. Um, any, anything else on that that I, that I didn't really touch on? Okay. Uh, next up is when we process information, do we lose information? Uh, I touched on this before, but yes. Uh, yeah, anytime you change something, you ne necessarily, anytime that you, that you take a lot of information and consolidate it down to something that's understandable, you're losing something. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we, we have these compression formats in computers where there's lossy and lossless compression. Lossy compression means you're losing information, but it's probably not the main information you cared about. And lossless means everything in that main bit of information can be pulled back, like nothing is lost. However, we have to realize that that information we're processing was already processed from another bit of information and it just wasn't stored in an efficient manner. Yeah, I, I, I think of being a historian, I think about, about this stuff that I, I tell the students all the time, that once we write history down, we've made that the new thing. Yeah. That is the reality now. Yeah. We have lost everything else. We know, you, you know, we, we can look back and know that, that Pearl Harbor happened, in, uh, you know, on December 7th. But we can't look back and see what did Tojo have for breakfast that day. It's gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though it really happened, it's not, it, 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 that information is gone. Yeah. Well, and, and, and uh, to bring that back to computers, let's say you took a picture. Most pictures, when they're taken by camera, are stored in an inefficient format because it saves computing resources for the camera to have to make it really efficient when all you really want to do is capture that information quickly. That's your main goal, so you can take a, a, a fast picture. Um, now, if we look back at the original thing, that was us three sitting in this room, uh, drinking beers. There's a lot of information there. There's the chemical composition of the beer. There's there's uh, uh, our our mass, our our uh, volume. There's a lot of things, and all that camera took from that whole scene was what light has bounced around the room. That is all the camera picked up, and it picks it up in an inefficient format. And when you take it through a lossless compression, it says, "Well, we could store this information uh, much more efficiently." But you have to realize that the original processing of that information was taking the picture. We took these transistors and we rearranged them in a way that represented light income into a camera through a lens onto a, a little uh, uh, CMOS chip. So that was the original processing. There's, there's a sea monster chip? Yes, a sea monster chip. Okay. That is how your gotcha. camera works. That's what that's um, I'm glad you explained this to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm here for you, Mike. Um, but but that was the processing. It was arranging those transistors in a way that we could recall up the light in that room at that time. Um, and so we have lost a whole bunch of information about the actuality of that scene whenever you take a picture. And I think this is a, an intuitive concept to us. I, I, I can think of a million times where I've taken a picture of something awe-inspiring and engulfing and beautiful. And then you look at the picture like, huh. That that just does not capture yeah what Go I out on a harvest super moon and take a picture of it with your phone and yeah. it's gonna look like shit yeah. yeah yeah I remember going to Yellowstone a few years ago and took my nice camera and took these beautiful beautiful pictures up there and I got back and people were like yeah it's a picture you know yeah because it doesn't have the same effect no it you're doesn't right. you're right it doesn't so we've lost all that awe inspiring information and if you took that person that saw that picture there they'd say oh man this was it. Yeah, there's Take a, a reason we say it yeah. doesn't do it justice. Yeah. It's only worth a thousand words. Actual experience worth like a billion. No, at least. At yeah. least. 
So, um, and then I guess the last question here is why do we work so hard to lose information or gain non-physical information? And uh, I, 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 I will come back to that term of physical information later. But why is it so important to us to strip all that information off? We, we kind of touched on this earlier, yeah. but we, we can't handle it. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's necessary for us to function. We, we, yeah. You know, you, you can't, you can't know if you, if you've ever been overwhelmed by information, you understand how this is. Yeah. You know, when you're in college and you're, you've got 15 exams and this stuff and uh, you're so overwhelmed, you just can't uh, get any more in your brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to simplify things. That's, that's the nature of who we are. Yeah. So uh, all that said, I want to go into information type five, and I think this is where things are going to start getting a little bit deeper and, and maybe start hinting at the answer to the question, is information Wait, physical? We're going, to get an we're going to get an answer to no. that? Oh, yeah. No, the, today's answer day. No. We never get an answer. I'll make yeah. sure it doesn't okay. happen. All right. So physical information. Physical information is the information that is contained in a physical system. Information itself uh, may be loosely defined as that which can distinguish one thing from another. So if you can take any two things, any two things, and you can say that thing is not the other thing. A cat is not a dog. A cat is not a dog. You can take two atoms that are very similar and say this atom is not that atom. Maybe not even because they look any different. Maybe because that atom's over here and this atom's over there. You have now said that's information. Yeah, okay. That, that, that's fair. Yeah. So um, the question is, does physical information process because we've talked about information and information processing so does physical information itself process do you have any thoughts the, on that the, the, the physical object does it process yeah and, no. and, and i'm saying without a human around does the physical object itself process uh, no i don't think it does i think i i, I think I, I think the action of processing is what does that so does I, a so, chair process yeah look, that's what the earth is here. There are no humans. There's no life around. Okay. I was going to say, because I think we can definitively say cats process, bats process. No life. No, okay. no, no yeah, living observer. And the question is, without life around, does information get processed? Yep. I don't think it gets processed, but it definitely exists. I think it does. And, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why I think it does. Uh, a couple of different things here. One, if no humans are around, let's imagine a universe with a single well, atom and no it. life is, it, yes. is, is where you came to. Well, I, I'm I'm, just, I'm taking it further than that. A universe with a single hydrogen atom, with a proton okay. and an electron. Like I, I okay. think we can. That electron, whether we call it this or not, is making is moving around. It's making decisions that I'm go I'm here. I'm going to be there. I'm I'm moving around. That atom may be even moving around if we have any kind of access of, of well, you, reference. You said it's making decisions. Yeah, yeah. It, it's reacting to something. It's not making decisions. Well, I, I, I wouldn't distinguish those two as... Well, I, I think there has to be. I think the, the, the very term decision means that you, that you get information and it you make a decision con about it. Consciousness. There's no consciousness to an atom. Well, I mean, I, I think that's a free will question there, but... Oh, my God. <laughs> There is no consciousness to the atom. Okay, but okay, fine. So computers can't make decisions. Not by themselves without it being put into them, t telling them to do it. A computer can't, a computer could not have just started from nothing and done it. Something had to create that first and put it and, and put that into play. Now, do I think computers could probably create other computers? Well, yeah, but you still had that first action. Okay. All right. Fine. Um, so something makes a computer, right? Yep. But something made everything. Whether whether you believe in a, in a god sure, being sure, or, sure, or a big sure. bang or something, yeah, yeah, something made everything. So it, we need a if if you're invoking original decision, original decision was there. Whatever made the computer it was. I mean, we have the same problem. Is what I'm saying. I don't see it that way. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't even understand how you can reach that that's the same problem. Okay. Well, a person made a computer. The person made a decision. 
Something made the person that made a decision, something, and we okay. go all the way back and we have original decision, right? Okay. And eventually a hydrogen atom was involved in that process yeah, sure, somewhere. Sure. Now we have our new universe. It has one hydrogen atom. Something made that hydrogen atom. Decision? No, I don't think it's a decision. I think it's a reaction. So can decision arise without a decision before it? I don't know. <laughs> See? I, 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 I think you have to have consciousness to have a decision. At some point, you have to have a spark of consciousness. Without that spark of consciousness, it's not a decision. It's a reaction. Okay. So that, um, that electron is reacting to its environment of the other proton. It's moving around. Um, why does it react? Because every time it moves, its location information changes. Yeah. Why does that information change? And I want to go back to to information processing. Um, the change of information in any manner detectable to an observer. Could an observer detect the electron change? Yeah, 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 they could. But there isn't, a, isn't an observer at this point. Well, yeah. there's not, but it, it doesn't say any manner in which an but, observer detects. It says but your question was, is information processed, not does information exist? I think information exists, but there's nothing to process it at this point. Well, th there's information, an electron's here, and then an electron's here. Yeah. Is that a change? No, I think it's information. I, I, uh, but, but, yes, it's a change, but, there, but there's no processing of that information. Would that they didn't change, take that information and process it and make something else. Would that change be detectable to an observer? Yes. Uh, but there isn't an observer, so there's but, no, so you can't. But have it, that. It, it doesn't. End, it doesn't ask the question. What did, was it observed? Except you're you're, you're playing a you're playing a riddle here, where you're saying, but you know, if this was here, then would it be? Yes, if that was there, then I'd say it was. It was, but it's not there, so it, so, so it doesn't. It's not processed. Well, I mean, uh, uh, information nev never. So, for instance. Uh, to say that that information never processed because there was no observer would would say to, would be to say that um, uh, uh, DNA unobserved doesn't process, or it'd be to say that that a book written no. but never looked at is is is, no, that's, is that's not, not that's not what it's saying at all. What it's saying is the information is there, but the information is not processed until it is looked at. Well, I mean, let's let's. And a decision is made. Let's read it. Information processing is the change of information in any manner detectable by an observer. And detectable, detectable means by an observer. You don't have an observer able to be detected. But you don't have an observer. You so you can't process it. So what you're observer. saying? So, but this is an interesting <laughs> thing. So, so let's go down that path. You're saying that if an, there was a single hydrogen atom in the universe and the electron moving around. That is not information processing, but if suddenly pop, there's a person, they're, they're far away from it, but they are looking at it, suddenly that electron moving around is information processing. I think the person is processing the information. I think the other, other action is just information. It's not information processing. Interesting. Any thoughts, Anna? Um... I think the definition of information processing is kind of is kind of messed up um, because information processing processing is a verb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You are processing. Yeah. Um, when you are processing information. It would seem what you're processing is one chain, one, say, an object making a change to another state, we'll say. Yeah, I have a definition if you want to do for processing just generally. Fine. Uh, perform a series of mechanical or chemical operations in order to change or preserve it. Okay. The problem is your definition that you're that you're throwing out now. You're throwing out the definition you had on here because it says detectable by an observer. Well, she was questioning definition. That's yeah. why we, we yeah. went to the, the processing definition. I I I, yeah. I I'll stand by that definition, but for for the but processing is not the change of information itself. Um processing I think is 
the observation and recording of a change. I think so too. So what would you call changing information? I don't know. Changing information. I, I, I don't information know. Information change. I'm, I'm going with the definition we have. And the definition we have for information processing says detectable by an observer. Well, this is ask. from that really bad wiki, right? It is from a really bad wiki. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So is there maybe some chance that they just fucked up this definition? Uh, absolutely. Well, there's a chance that Webster fucks up the definition. I mean, fair point. You know, absolutely fair point. I just I'm, I'm looking at the term that's being defined in the definition, and structurally, it doesn't seem like those two match. But if, if we are if, if we are looking for truth, if we are philosophers looking for something, then we have we, we have established the rules that we're under. We've established our terminology, and it doesn't meet this terminology. It doesn't meet this rule. See, I, I disagree, and and I, I guess that that it depends on where you say because detectable means able to be detected, right? On what able means, right? Mm -hmm. um, because are you talking about it has all the constituents needed and an observer is needed. So you're arguing that, that it is detectable by an observer. There's just not one there. Yes. And, and, and I can agree that something can be observable, detectable without having actually been detected. Uh, for example, the structure of, go back to this, the structure of DNA existed and was able to be observed even before we observed it. Yeah, I, I would argue that if you take a, a computer and I, I set it rendering this video after I'm done editing everything and then I walk away and I get some dinner and I, I do my thing, that that information change is able to be detected. I could look at the original and the, the rendered and say there's a difference here whether or not I ever choose to do that. Yeah, well, and, and I understand where you're coming yeah. from, but I'm saying that in a, in a philosophical school, when you look at this, that that hasn't happened until it's observed. But the uh, yeah the we get back we get, we get back to the to, to the cat in the box that's both alive and dead at the same time okay yeah. but we get the same issue here we so looking at this definition the ability for a change in information to be detected does not equal the processing of information I, I want to get to a deeper one because I, I think this is a lot more clear. In my mind, it's a lot more clearly processing. It, it's a little more uh, abstract and requires a little more background. Uh, we'll have some stuff in show notes again. Um, but it's it's an interesting phenomenon. Phenomena. Anyway, um, that uh, lends it, it looks more like information processing to me. And it goes back to the cat in a box. Schrodinger's cat. I don't. Uh, I'm sure most of our listeners are familiar. Sure, sure. Uh, but this cat's put in a box with some kind of random machine that has a 50/50 chance of killing it. And Schrodinger's cat says that that cat is both alive and dead until you look at it and check. Now, this is an odd thing, and I, you know, I, I, I don't think anyone. Uh, first of all, I don't condone people putting cats in boxes with death machines. I'm cool, dude. Small children, yes, cats, no. Yeah, but I think most people kind of look at this sideways and say, of course the cat has a state. What What are you talking about? But the, the basis for this has to do with experiments in entangled particles. And all entanglement means is that there is some property that of two objects or more, but we'll say two for simplicity's sake, that if you know something about one, you you figure out something about the other. So we've all played an entanglement game that we're really familiar with. It's like this. Twister. There's a prize. <laughs> or oh, maybe the, may the other entanglement yeah. game. <laughs> There's a prize, maybe two prizes, and you take them and you put them in your hands, you put them behind your back, you sift them around, you put you put them in your hands. Or there's three doors, two have a goat, one has a car, or whatever it is. And you say you pick the hand, you pick I left get hand. Two chances to get a goat? You get two chances to get a goat. Nice. That's how the game works. I already have a car. I need a goat. And you pick a hand, and they open their hand. And assuming honesty of the, 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 the person performing the game. Which is a bad idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Knowing what's in this hand, or what's not in this hand, we now know what's in the other hand. We never looked in this hand, but we know something about it. Um, so that's all entanglement means. A bit of information yeah. uh, of two things that, that by knowing one, you know the other. Um, 
And so we can take particles and photons and we can entangle them in such a way where let's say we know the states are opposite, right? Um, for instance, here's a really good example. Let's say we take a black box and we shoot two particles at each other and there may be a slight <coughs> variation in the angle, but we know they're going to hit and they go off in two different directions. Now we're not looking at the particles, um, but all of a sudden we look at the direction one's going. We automatically know the other one's going in the exact opposite direction. We can take and entangle particles in such a <coughs> manner that we have no clue about what their state actually is, but by looking at one, we can know the other. And we have done experiments, and we have found mathematically, in experiments that have been repeated hundreds and thousands of times using multiple different variations, that those particles, when they're entangled in such a way that there is no physical way for you to discern the state, don't pick a state. They, they, they don't choose to be one way or the other until you look at it. Now, I look at that, and many people look at it and say it's strange, but I look at that and I say it makes perfect sense. Because if there was no reason, nobody ever asked the question, what state are you in? Then that particle would never have to know what state it's in. It would only need to know that I'm the opposite state of the other particle. And then once asked the question, it could process that information and say, randomly select, I'm in this state. And the other one would instantly know because it's an opposite state. That's the only data it has. I'm in opposite state to B. I'm in opposite state and what that state is. And we do this in video games. When we make video games, we don't process all the pixels on the screen, we don't, or all the pixels in the game. We process the pixels your screen has asked for. And all we know about the other pixels is, is general shapes and the data yeah. necessary to gather that. And then we get that, that data of what the screen should show when it's asked for. And to me, this looks like efficiency in information processing. And I can't really think of a good alternate explanation. And when we say observer, let, let, let me clarify there. We don't mean something sentient. We don't mean a person or something like that. What we mean is some physical condition in which the particle had to choose. So, for instance, when we talk about polarization of light, we might have two particles who we know are opposite in polarization. But until it has to pass through a filter in which one of those states couldn't pass through, it doesn't choose until it hits that filter what it is. So the observer would be the filter. It's not sentient. It's not something that asked. It's the fact that I have to make a decision now because I'm choosing whether to pass through this filter. And to me, that speaks to information processing. So if two, what were, what were we using? Photons? Photons, yes. Are shot at each other in such a way that they are intended to hit each other and glance off in different directions. Are you saying that the direction at which, uh, the angle at which they glance off of each other is unknown until, say, one of those photons begins to approach a wall? Well, <sighs> because that would seem to be a physical item relevant to the information, but if by chance the photon could have glanced off 40 degrees in the Y direction and 25 degrees in the Z direction, but it also could have glanced off, say opposite those, 25 degrees in the Y direction and 40 degrees in the Z direction, the wall is going to be in a different place. And so in order to, in order for the wall to be able to observe and interpret where this photon is, the photon is going to have to have known its own state. So uh, a couple things there. My example of glancing uh, atoms was just kind of a, uh, 
an example of entanglement where a certain person wouldn't know. Uh, it, that example actually doesn't achieve a, a superposition uh, in science. We don't have a way to do that. Secondly, uh, photons would pass through each other. They don't. They interfere. They don't. They don't glance. Find two items head. that would glance off of each but, other. So, but yeah. So, so what you're saying is that's an ineffective example. Yeah, uh, that, that doesn't work. But I'll tell you a, an example where position can be in a superposition, and we observe it and we interact with it. Electrons around a, a, a nucleus don't have a set position. They only appear when, when you say, are you here? They say yes or no. They appear when you ask where they are. And we know this is the case because we can put a barrier that electrons can't pass through up and then move an atom really close to it, a, a really thin barrier because they can't ever appear in the barrier and move an atom really close to it and every once in a while, if we go on the other side of the barrier and say, is the electron there? The electron will jump on the other side of the barrier and say, yeah, I'm here. And that is a physical problem that we really experience because our transistors are getting so small and efficient that we're starting to hit the bridge where that happens. Or we have these transistors with a barrier that electrons can't pass through. An electrical current is jumping across that barrier uh, because of quantum effects and we, we can't really make our transistors any smaller because that so there's an example of positional uh, 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 Uncertainty in the universe where that kind of thing actually does happen. Are you on the other side of the wall? Nope, nope, nope now I'm on the other side of the wall and nobody knows How did you get on the other side of the wall? You can't pass through this material. You know what it is. is they didn't build a big enough wall yeah, it used yeah. the ladder. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it used the ladder to get, but yeah, but yeah, so, so that kind of got Trump to build the wall. Yeah, that kind of positional superposition is a real thing. It, it doesn't occur in the example that, you know, we kind of played with earlier. Okay. But yeah, we observe that in the universe. And, and yeah. that to me seems like efficiency and information processing inherent in the universe. I got to be honest, you have lost me completely. I am trying to keep up with you, but I'm a dumb history teacher. And I look over here and, and, and you and Anna are having this great intelligent conversation. And I'm counting You don't know. Tiles. <laughs> we could be spouting bullshit over here. <laughs> there are physicists out there yelling because of the idiocy. So Oh, yeah. oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> All right. Well, I, 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 I think we can probably move on. I don't know um, that. Um, uh, the next one is, there, is there a limit to that, to that processing? I think since there's, there's kind of question here, there's, there's not group buy-in yeah. on the processing. Um, I, I guess I'll say I think there is a limit, and I think that that limit can be inherently seen in the speed of light. I think that's the universe saying I can't process things any faster than that, and we see that as a, a we that, see that in scientific experiments. That's how I feel when rap music comes on. I just can't process that. Yeah, you really are old. Yeah, shut up. You say it, not Thank me. You. Well, yeah. I do too. Thanks. Thanks. Only in response to you. <sighs> So the next question is, what does this imply for determinism? So uh, specifically, I wanted to ask on that question, um, when we talk about these superpositions, this data that doesn't exist until asked, does that have any implication in determinism itself? I don't know. I, you, you got me on superpositions. I was thinking about the Kama Sutra, and I was ready to go. So... Uh, it would seem to me if you are characterizing unobserved objects as being able to make a choice of what their position is, even if it isn't tangled with another object, that that would seem to cause determinism to break down. Yeah, well, and there's, there's two things here, right? When you can look at the initial particle that, that isn't in any state until it's asked what state it's in and say that breaks determinism. But there's a really interesting aspect. Because then the other product, the other item is determined. Yeah. And so does that then make a, a kind of super determinism? Because we can separate them further than they could possibly communicate. Yeah. And the other one still acts that way. So was it the other one determined? What is it? A free will type decision between the two of them to say, we are going to be entangled together. And when you decide, when one of us is, is observed, the other one will agree to be the other state or the same state, whatever the particular entangle entanglement situation is. Um, was this a, a decision that was made between the two of them? Um, because the scenarios would seem to indicate that they're being forced into this position of entanglement. Um, 
but I think this kind of stands up for my own theory of I think that there's a bit of determinism and free will together. Okay. Like this. Nothing. I still don't know what the hell we're doing. All right. Um, I am trying to get back to this, and I, I y'all, y'all are so talking so far over my head at this point. Can we talk about the cave? Well, we're getting there. Okay. I'm, I'm coming to the cave. I'm coming to the cave. Um. Next. So the, we talked about this. I, I want to uh, we and, and I touched on information processing shortcuts in the universe. I want to talk for just a second about black holes because black holes have an interesting um, uh, mathematical uh, uh, property arising from them. I'll say, I'll give you one example of this, but there are others others in the math. So we have these two conflicting ideas in physics. One is the thing called the Planck length, and the Planck length is real simple to understand. It is the shortest possible distance to move. We think of movement as analog. There is actually a really small amount of uh, distance that you cannot move any less than, called the Planck length. I need another drink for this one. Yeah. We have light, which oscillates like a wave in shorter and shorter frequencies. And anything that has any heat to it produces light of shorter and shorter wavelengths. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So here is the question. There's not really an upper limit to heat. There's nothing that says something can only be so hot. Yet, when things get hotter, that wavelength gets shorter. But we know the wavelength can't go beyond the Planck length. So what happens when an object gets hotter, gets hot enough to produce a wavelength? A negative wavelength. Yeah, a wavelength beyond the Planck length. We have these two ideas. We know it produces the light, but the light can't exist. What happens? We, we crunch the math. At the temperature where that occurs, a black hole forms. That is the energy density necessary to make a black hole. We also have a, a, another thing. There's a, a property in quantum physics that says uh, you cannot have two things occupying the same informational state. And this gets back to our physical information definition. And all, all that's really saying is their location is a bit of information and the type of thing they are is a bit of information. You can't have two things of the same type at the same place, the exact same thing there, that they would have the exact same quantum information. So I can't be where the wall is because the wall's there. It's a basic breakdown of that. Whenever things get denser than that quantum limit, a black hole forms. Whenever two properties of physics collide to the point that they interfere with each other, it seems we get a black hole. To me, this seems like an overflow error in the universe. The universe cannot process both this and this, so black hole. That's just, that part of the universe is broken now. We, we, we don't go there. Um, what do you think of the idea of black hole as an information, ha- uh, information error handling tool in the universe? Does that mean we can fix black holes? Black holes fix themselves. It just takes a really long time. I, I don't I don't know. I'm I'm boggled by it. It's so it's, unlike a bug in a computer program. Yeah. Yeah. You just throw up an error message, but you throw up a black hole in the universe. Well, I meant unlike an error in a computer program, oh, it, it fixes will correct itself. itself. Well, yeah. It eats itself eventually, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it emits like radiation, a, gets smaller yeah, and smaller. Yeah, yeah. Like mutations in the genetic code that aren't advantageous to survival. Yeah. That's yeah. very, very Darwinistic of you. What? No. <laughs> All right. Well, it didn't seem like we, we have a lot uh, uh, of information there. I, I do find it interesting. I find it interesting. I just don't have an answer. And I don't, I, yeah. it, what, what you know is part of what his, our, our philosophy is, is, you know, if there's an easy answer, it's not real philosophy. Yeah. Well, all this to me, taken together, speaks to me of the universe processing information. Uh, now, maybe, maybe that's a simplistic understanding or a wrong interpretation. I'm completely open to those ideas, but that's what I see when I see these 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 strange. I just assume that you're wrong. So then I, maybe. Fair enough. So then maybe the observer that exists when you have nothing but a hydrogen atom in the universe is the greater univ the the. 
or maybe it's a future observation. Maybe. You know, maybe it's not being observed now, but a thousand years from now, somebody figures out a way to observe it and, and then yeah. it exists. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's fair enough. Uh, ready to go in the cave? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Because okay. this is exciting. Is information the real Turn universe? The yeah. yeah. Whoosh. So, uh, real quick overview of the allegory cave. They're, they're trapped in a cave. They see the shadows on the wall because people are taking objects in front of flames. Mm -hmm. But And they think that this is the real universe, but it's not. It's yeah, just a yeah. shadow. Eventually, Plato gets out of the cave, and he sees the real world. So here's... Which may or may not be the real world. Yeah. Yeah. Here's my question. Let's... Because I know you love the, I the, do. the cave. I do. I do. When Plato wrote this, he was assuming that there was a perfect form that was a chair or a cat. I think yes. he went too far with that theory. But I think Plato even would have to agree. That whatever he imagined the real universe to be could not be the real universe because he's not that intelligent. Well, he, he would have. Uh, yeah. Pla Plato himself said that the, the wisest thing th that a man can say is, I don't know. Right. So, you know, you, you see that. And, and, but I think that was why he was explaining things the way he was, that, that there's a per perfect form somewhere and all we see is imperfection. Yeah. So here's my question. What if the physical world is the delusion? And it's just a set of, of simple rules on information. For instance, that the same bit of information can't, can't uh, because my information can't be the same as the wall, I can't inherit the same memory space as that wall. But the light shining off it, that's just an interaction of how this particle interacts is, and all the universe is. And this doesn't even necessarily mean it's a simulation. This could just be the nature of a non-simulated universe. Is the information around us? What if we get out of the cave and we find... This is just information, and the delusion is that there is a door. There is just information that represents something that we interpret as door. So information isn't the representation of something real. Reality is the, re it is the symbol that we give the information. You're, you're, yes. you're flipping, the, flipping it on its head. Yes. That's a, a, a interesting way to look at things. I think that's what I said earlier. I, I want to put it this way. If, if that's true, I, I'm, I'm very sad and very depressed. Why but, uh, is it sad? Why? why? Uh, but it just, just because it, it's, it, seems, it seems like if all of this is just bits, bytes, numbers, and data, then th it there is no... It doesn't make it any less real. But it, it, does, it does to me. It's something oh, okay. that feels, it feels wrong to me. I, I want to think that everything that I'm experiencing is real. I want to know that this physical is real. And I want to know that, that, that this, this information is just a way of explaining the reality that I have. I don't want to, I, I don't want to be in a simulation. I don't want to be, you know, and even if you don't go to simulation, I don't want to be a... Uh, you, know, you don't a, want to be in a the rendering, perfect version. A rendering of a mathematical formula. Yeah. Yeah. Th this whole idea to me really rings back... Uh, uh, Hitchhiking, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, 42. Yeah. Um, where they had 42, but Earth was the, the, the processing machine to find the question. It was Earth. And uh, the, unbeknownst to them, the Earth itself was a giant computer. All the people moving around, they were just carrying bits of information around. And that really resonates to me. If, if this was true, can we just be a a part of the computer. Now, I don't know that that makes us any less important. Uh, I think if you took a chip in your computer and ripped it out, you would find that all those chips were really important. But it, it may be that um, that we are just part of a processing. And maybe that processing has a goal. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's just a naturally arising thing. But that that the very movements, the very interactions, the particles, the the big bang, the collisions, the black holes, the things going around the sun, is all just the next process in the processing of the universe. I think I have to retire because John takes all of my hope away whenever we do a show. He just takes he takes all the goodness and hope in the world and just pisses all over it. What's wrong with being? I'll go ahead part and apologize process? for the next show then. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord, help us all. Sorry. Yeah. So with this description and a bit more understanding we have of physical information, one last I'll question. You're I welcome. That's a, that'll be more appropriate. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Uh, one, one more question that I want to get to is with the understanding of physical information being the complete description of anything itself 
And I, I think uh, uh, something else to mention is that the thing itself is always the most efficient form of that information. Is there anything in our universe that is in itself a piece of physical information? Because I even think of the transistors and how we say they store information, but you could even look at the physical information of their arrangement no, and, and, it, and charges. It, and I, I think I think if we go with your definition, then, then yes, everything is information. Uh, okay. I I don't like it. I struggle with it, but but I think I'm 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 moving to your to understand your argument mm -hmm. a little better. Uh, uh, I still I still disagree with you on the processing mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. but I do think that everything is information. I tend to think that everything, that all objects are information, mm -hmm. um, but I'm leaning toward ideas are not. Okay. Um, there's something outside, in the mind-body problem, there's something outside of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's I, interesting. I wish, I, 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 I wish we could delve into that one, but it's kind of been a long yeah. one now. And, yeah. Uh, Real quickly, I just... I look at, at things like like numbers, like a lot of the questions in philosophy, and I think that those ideas, um, they I don't think that they are physically represented. I think that well, but, but, the but, but concepts, they are information. Uh -huh. I, I don't necessarily. Yeah, I think they are information, absolutely, but yeah. that they're not physical. Yeah, okay. I, I, I could I could agree with you there. Without our processing of them, I think that they would still exist yeah. in a non-physical sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, I don't I, know that I agree, I'm, I'm not but that's go fine. Into, I'm not going to go yeah. into that now because I think that, you know, we're we're sitting at a little over an hour already and uh, yeah. I'm kind of lost on this, but, yeah. but it's hard for me to comprehend that something that wasn't processed exists. So yeah. I, fine. but we're back to that argument. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. Yeah. I think there's some circles to go with that one. So Thad, I don't know if we've answered your question. Probably not. But I Sorry. hope we gave you something to think about. Um, I hope you yelled a lot at your um, at, at your uh, uh, podcast. He said he does that. This. He I said he, he argues with us all hey, the hey, time. I will I bet. Understand. I will bet he argues more with me than anybody. I don't I know, Fab. So. Let us know who do you argue with the most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to know that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed that episode. If you want to be like Thad, you can uh, help us out by. <laughs> that should be a shirt. Yeah, I want to be like Thad. I want to be like Thad. <laughs> But you can help us out by joining our Patreon at patreon.com. So six pack Dad, I want you to know she's writing that down right now. So <laughs> just, 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 just be prepared. <laughs> this could happen. Yeah. Uh, you can get uh, uh, different perks, different levels, uh, going all the way down to a dollar a month, and we'll just we'll send you a koozie. You can uh, watch this, record the show live at ten dollars a month. You can get early access at five. We have different levels, um, and we're we're looking at different ways to incorporate uh, different things into there. Uh, we're also trying to build uh, Six Pack Philosophy into more of a community. We yeah, have yeah. quizzes, uh, quiz, we're working Fine. on more. Uh, on our website, we're starting the newsletter. We're hoping to put out articles. Uh, we're doing what we can while we can, but we want to really turn this into a community where people can come and just talk philosophy, I absolutely. think. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so anyway, if you want to help see that grow, patreon.com slash Six Pack Philosophy. Hey everyone, all you Six Pack Philosophy listeners and everybody watching on the YouTubers here. Uh, <laughs> it's killing you, isn't it? Yeah. It's killing you. We the have to enter ovaries. Yeah. Like ovaries? No, those are on the red tuberies. Those are red tuberies. Yes, yes, so yes that's yes. a different tubery. Uh, we have to interrupt ourselves real quick. Uh, again. Again, we messed up. Uh, we are doing podcast recommendations for, well, and this was going to be a YouTube recommendation, but a different show recommendation. A different show, yeah. Uh, every episode. And we forgot to include ours. We had it written down and everything. Uh, so this one is called Kurzgesagt. <laughs> how do you say that, Madam Mistress? Yeah, how do you? Kurzgesagt. Kurzgesagt. That's in a nutshell. Zog. Whatever. I that know. GT is, is, it's German, and it's that's German. tough. That oh, GT yeah. is tough. So, Germans weren't that tough. We beat them in two world wars. Go ahead. But their I'm, language is. I'm not going to ask you to try and spell that. It, first of all, it's a great show. that They they take uh, deep, deep ideas in science and philosophy, do kind of a monologue on them, but then put it to an animated background. It's got a really... Uh, uh, it's got a really interesting... It's got a really interesting look that keeps you engaged. <laughs> as well as... Stop a, it. 
as well as a lot of deep information, in, including one of the um, uh, links that we have for the information theory in the show. Uh, but I'm not going to ask you to try and spell that uh, if you're listening on the podcast. There's two ways you can figure out how you can get to this. One is go to our YouTube. There's going to be a little uh, card at the end that will let you link right over there. The other is if you're not a YouTuber, uh, you can then just sign up for our newsletter and we will email you the link. Or while you're driving down what? the road, you can get out a pen and start writing on the side of your arm. This, this Yes, you've got it K-U-R-Z-G-E-S-A-G-T. No, no. And by yes. now you've had an accident. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So don't do that. Don't have an accident. Go to our YouTube or sign up for our newsletter at sixpackphilosophy.com. Newsletter. But while you're not driving. Yes. While you're not. Or if you're really good at multitasking. See you in a second. No. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers again. Back to the show. You cannot advocate texting and driving or ty typing and driving. You can't do that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've enjoyed it and we hope you have too. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.